Hello, everybody. We are almost ready to start the um, webinar. And uh, so I'm just going to um, wait for a, a couple of minutes and uh, let everybody come in. So if I, I hope you can hear me. If somebody can just uh, send me a message that you can hear me. Thank you. Great. So um, just as we are waiting to start the program, if uh, you um, have any questions for me, I will answer them at the end of the program. So uh, any questions that uh, you have, I'll answer at the end of the program. So welcome everybody. We are today doing a webinar on the sixth International Fresh Talents of Vedic Astrology Conference, which is happening on 2nd to 7th November 2018 in San Francisco. And I'm uh, going to uh, introduce you to the faculty uh, talk about what are the lectures happening and overall uh, explain to you this whole concept of this conference as well. So uh, let us start um, with the chanting. Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha Vakratunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Sama Prabha Nerevignam Kurume Deva Sarva Kareshu Sarvada Om Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwara Guru Sakshat Param Brahman Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Om Brahma Murari Stripurantakari Bhanu Shashi Bhumi Suto Buddhascha Guru Shukraha Shani Rahu Ketava Sarve Graha Shanti Bhavo Japa Kusum Sankasham Kashapayam Mahadvitim Tamorim Sarva Papagnam Pranato Asmi Devakaram so welcome to the um, Fresh Talents of Vedic Astrology Conference webinar. And this is me at last year's Fresh Talents Conference in New Delhi. Uh, uh, this uh, year, the conference is 2nd to 7th November 2018 uh, in San Francisco. Uh, and it's sponsored by uh, my academy. And uh, the thing is, is that so far, um, we have been doing this conference in India. So first to fifth, this is the first time that the conference is being held in USA. Uh, and uh, the aim of this conference is a blend of great Jyotish masters and students of um, mine, Komela, and alumni of the academy who are now Jyotish masters in their own right. So the, uh, 
idea came to me about this conference because as I was teaching my students, I felt that the students needed a platform where they could lecture and um, uh, also because they can learn and get opportunities so that they are invited to other uh, conferences. Because when we go to conferences, you find that um, there's a need for new speakers, fresh energy. So this was my idea. And but then I thought that just lecturing, they should be also uh, introduction of great Jyotish masters as well. So we have uh, a blend of that. Um, many new speakers who get first opportunity to present their knowledge after years of studying Vedic astrology. Uh, great knowledge is shared, fresh outlooks to Vedic astrology make it a great conference to attend. And I think what you have to realize that when people are presenting for the first time or they're new at it, they really work hard at their presentation and you're surprised at the level of the knowledge that is being presented. And, uh, you know, many people who, uh, you know, they spend months uh, preparing their class and it becomes a, a, a great new fresh look. And you'll see from the titles that people have given and uh, researched as well. So and then it's not a huge conference, so it's delegates into uh, uh, act with scholars from India, USA, graduates from my academy, but you get a great camaraderie and networking because you are each person is an individual and these are not huge conferences. So uh, the idea is there's only one track. So you listen to all the topics, you are uh, totally involved with the subject. Uh, so um, and so why fresh talents of uh, Vedic astrology? Because that's it. It's like uh, introducing new people. And I actually also want to introduce new speakers in India that you haven't heard before. But bringing them to US is more difficult because of the visa problems. But when I have the conference in India, I try to introduce fresh talents there as well. And um, so the basic uh, to be able to speak at this conference, the minimum requirement is that they should have studied a three year intensive course, which is a I do an online course of 108 lessons. And then also because I've been teaching since 95, I have some very senior students who have learned from me right from word go and they are still there. So uh, whether they're studying with me or I know them because after so many years, you know, it's over 20 years, I think they become friends. So um, uh, uh, you uh, uh, I asked them to do the lecture as well. So we've had uh, five conferences. The history of the conference started in 2013 in Pondicherry. Uh, second was Delhi. Third was Puvar, Kerala fourth Mahabalipuram, fifth I had earlier this year. And the reason why I'm having the sixth conference in San Francisco is uh, because this year my India trip is very long. It is the Nakshatra trip. I'll talk about it at the end of this program. So it's um, I didn't want to do the conference and then the long trip. So we have the conference in San Francisco this year. And if you don't know, I live here. So this is my, uh, I don't live in the city, but I live around San Francisco, near San Francisco. So that is why this is um, uh, the uh, conference uh, venue this year. Uh, so the first conference we were blessed by Swami Sita. She came and she made a, a special effort. She came and blessed us all for the conference. And uh, so it was a great start at Pondicherry. And I just show you some pictures. And this is the Ganesha temple in Pondicherry. That is very beautiful. So that was also part of our trip. Uh, in India, when you're in India, we do all sorts of uh, things that are part of the conference as well. And this was at the uh, Ganesha temple. We had a puja there. And um, the, our first keynote speaker was Kailash Nath, and we did this program on Prashna. 
I mean, it seems so far away, but it's not that far back, you know, but uh, it was great uh, conference and um, all speakers are from all over the world. This is John Ryder from Australia. And uh, so uh, Paul from UK. And this is some of the delegates at the hotel. Uh, and uh, me with Ashlesha Nakshatra. <laughs> this is a temple near Pondicherry that has all the Nakshatra rulers there. Uh, and uh, this is the Navagraha with the deities. And now this was our second conference in Delhi. We, whenever I have a conference in Delhi, we uh, go and visit my dear friend, uh, uh, Mr. Sagar, who publishes the Vedic astrology books. Uh, the uh, So this is our uh, visit and you tend to buy a whole lot of books there. And uh, so, um, uh, and Dr. Charak uh, was our keynote speaker. And uh, so this was our second conference. And um, Bill Sinclair, he's a great speaker. You'll hear him if you come to the conference this year. And Vinay Aditya. So this is our good Thali meal, Indian Thali meal. I'm going to try and see if we can do an Indian meal at uh, San Francisco as well. Uh, but uh, there are many good restaurants there as well. And we had J.N. Sharma. He's, of course, a great master on Prashna. Uh, he's uh, based in Delhi. He graced us and taught us a wonderful uh, class. And um, and then our, um, we were invited to uh, Michael's house, who lives in uh, Delhi. Uh, so the third conference was in Puvar. Um, and uh, Professor Jayashekha, he's a, a great uh, blessing to us and teaching us his great knowledge. And uh, uh, always in South India, we light the lamp and we honor the energy. It was a, a beautiful conference, very good location as well. Again, I have Bill lecturing and this was our conference venue so right on the sea and backwaters all combined together so when we would come out we could view this lovely uh, view scenery and um, so Swami Sita was there so she came and again gave us her blessings and honored us uh, at the third conference and uh, there's my mom and Keiko, who's another great speaker, Kavita. Um, so we can see. And the discussion during lunchtime, that was another thing that was great. Uh, so we did a boat trip as well as part of our conference. And I don't know what happened to this, uh, the words have got, the other way around. But this was the fourth conference in Mahabalipuram. And uh, uh, Sunil John came first time for the conference. He's going to be our keynote speaker this year. And uh, he is a spectacular speaker, very, very knowledgeable. And I've known Sunil for many, many years. So it was a great pleasure to have him. And of course, Professor Jashekha. He doesn't want to come to USA, but otherwise he's uh, always welcome. And Petra, who's going to give our key um, Saraswati lecture this year. And there's Keiko. And uh, we had a wonderful dinner. Some people, local people, they invited us over for dinner. And they gave us all these beautiful malas to wear. This is South Indian style welcome, uh, Tamil Nadu. And uh, we have our group here uh, and doing a little puja every day, visiting the local sites. So it's quite a lot of experience. So this was our hotel again with a great view. Uh, and uh, so the last year's conference was in Delhi again. Delhi's, I, I was brought up in Delhi and um, I educated in Delhi as well. It's a very spectacular place. It just has a bad uh, air quality, I can say. 
but when you're there for a few days, it doesn't really, uh, it's not so bad. But one of the things that was really good in Delhi was that we managed, we had a darshan with uh, uh, Dati Maharaj. He has this fabulous uh, Saturn temple in Delhi. And he was leaving, but we just had a perfect sinistry. We reached there, he was leaving. He was very kind to us. He talked to us for five minutes. I've met him many times before. And he always gives a special uh, welcome. And there's Lord Saturn. And uh, we had a great visit to the Saturn temples. Keiko doing the second time she did the Saraswati lecture because we had a cancellation and she very heroically stepped in and uh, did the lecture. Uh, and so these are some of the group there again with Professor. And last time at the conference, we also offered two scholarships. And uh, here this is... Um, uh, one of our scholarship students, this is the second, my guru's daughter, I offered her scholarship as well as Manoj. So we had, uh, even this year, I'm hoping to do a scholarship too. And uh, this was one of our fresh talents, Renata from last year and with uh, Vinaya Ditya. And we visited the Lotus Temple. So lots of activity as well. Uh, the thing is, this is a very personal experience. And so um, uh, this year when uh, we are here, uh, I just putting, um, sorry, this is the correct. So we have a huge faculty uh, this year with a very um, diverse students from all over the world. So I have Sunil John um, uh, from India, Dennis Harness, USA, Swamini, Swatma Vidyananda from India, Pandit Samavedula, he's India, USA, myself, Komela Sutton, uh, Keiko Ito from Japan, Bill Sinclair, USA, Petra Pobuda, Germany, Kamal Thapa, UK, Julie Sweetlake, USA, Kathy Coleman, USA, Lalita Krishnan, USA, Darinka Marun, Australia, Tulika Rhodes, USA, Tatiana Liskova, USA, Alina Elizabeth Preston, USA, Anahita Rao, UK, and Virginia Thomas, USA. Uh, so we have a very uh, strong faculty and diverse faculty as well. And um, so we're going to have six master classes and two and a half days of conference. Actually, we, because being in San Francisco, we were, I was trying to limit the day. So uh, in India, we have a bit longer time to uh, do so. So my um, great friend, Dennis Harness is going to be the chief guest and keynote speaker. And uh, he is, um, yeah, you all know Dennis is one of the, um, you know, major contributors to the spread of Vedic astrology in USA. He is a scholar. He studied for years. He is a great teacher and um, great uh, supporter. I'm not supporter. He's the was the foundation of the development of Vedic astrology with other people as well. But I think Dennis. Uh, was key to that. And what Dennis is going to do is because his also um, speciality is in counseling because he was a, a, psych a psychologist. He's a PhD in psychology, I think. I may be not. But uh, so he's going to talk about transpersonal counseling. That is his uh, main topic, a keynote address. And then uh, he wants to do outer planets uh, for uh, neo-Vedic perspectives. So uh, most of us in traditional Vedic astrology don't include uh, Uranus, Pluto, Neptune. So uh, Dennis is going to discuss of how we can incorporate them and their importance and what is the uh, significance of them. Uh, and uh, so open our minds to that. We've already had... Um, uh, one other lecture on this before, but uh, Dennis is a, a master on this. So he's going to give us these two great lectures. Uh, and then Sunil John, he is our main speaker, main guest. Uh, the, you know, Sunil John has this YouTube channel uh, called Saptarishi. Uh, 
uh, he is also um, a book publisher in India. He's an author. He's a fabulous speaker. And uh, his um, knowledge is extremely deep. And not only that, he has spent years going around India, meeting some great astrologers, and he's had one-to-one -one interaction with them. And through his channel, Saptarishi, he also promotes other people to come and be there. So that is, a, um, and he's a very good speaker as well. So when you will see him. And this was when he came to our 2000, um, uh, two years ago, 2016 conference. So he's going to talk about his lecture is going to be multiple uses of Trim Shamsha. And Trim Shamsha is D30 Varga chart. And uh, Varga charts, Trim Shamsha is the most uh, difficult to understand. Most people don't know what to do with it. And it is a chart that is used for health. It's used for your secret talents, your qualities, because it is uh, three... Um, if you divide um, 30 by 12, uh, the balance is six. So it represents the sixth house. But what he's going to present is not just one or two users, but multiple uses of Trimshamsha. And then his workshop is Secrets of Bhrigu Nandi Nadi. Bhrigu Nandi Nadi, you see these Nadi astrology texts, they are very secret uh, texts, but they also give some quick uh, aspects of how to use the planet. So, for example, I like Brigun Nandi Nadi very much. I have used it a lot. So, for example, if you look at the sun in the chart uh, and if sun has got planets with it, what does it mean? What does it mean to have planets second house from the sun, ninth house from the sun, tenth house? So, the Nadi uh, is Nadis are pulses of the chart and uh, uh, I don't know what uh, uh, Sunil is going to present, but seeing from what his other presentation is, is very in-depth and lots of detail and lots of uh, things that you, although you learn from Brigurnandi Nadi, you can put them into your own analysis and work them out in your own analysis. So, um, so we, we are very, well, very, very glad to have him over. And then Pandit Samavedula, he actually uh, is uh, uh, our, my priest. I've known him for many years. He comes to Bava as well. And uh, so this year, uh, I am. Uh, I asked him specially to uh, teach us a, a half-day workshop on Rig Veda mantras for the planets. So uh, you see. We learn the mantras, even the ones I'm doing. There are different levels of mantra that you do. You do mantra for the planets. Then there are the three types of mantras you can do. Uh, the Graha mantra, the Adi um, Devata, and the Pratyati Devata. So the three de deities that you will worship the planets. But the deeper key, and this is not all ever taught before, are the Rig Veda mantras. And the Rig Vedas are the pure Vedic mantras for the planet. So Panditji is going to teach us all the nine planets and a mantra for each one. And uh, we will, uh, he will uh, record it. Sorry, he will, we will repeat it and he will have a presentation as well. So uh, he's going to start off our program because he, it's, uh, he's the a priest, he will do some chanting. Uh, those of you who were at um, uh, UAC, he was there. He did everybody's chanting uh, before the class. So then uh, Keiko um, Ito, she's my long-term student, and she's a master in her own right now. Uh, and uh, she's uh, going to, uh, she's from Japan. She's coming. How to make new full moons work for you. You see, every time there's a new moon, uh, there's a new energy coming out. Every time there's a full moon. So these are things that are really important and are used as part of your daily practice to uh, work with the energy or your monthly practice uh, to what is happening 
with the new moon and full moon. She's done a lot of research on it, and she's also doing a master class on this subject. Then Bill Sinclair, uh, uh, he is from USA, from Seattle. And Bill, again, has been a long-term student of mine. And um, uh, we he is going to uh, do Nakshatra of Crisis and Resilience. Bill is very charismatic speaker, and he's going to do a master class on it. And his main thing is that he himself is, uh, uh, is dealing with crisis daily in his work life. And then he has now uh, become a super expert at how to identify crisis, what to do. And then he's going to look at the nakshatras in this way. So, um, so he's doing a master class as well. Then Swamini Swatma Vidyananda, uh, she's my uh, personal friend. She's going to do a spiritual discourse on Jyotish and spirituality. She's going to end our conference. Uh, Swamini Ji, she comes from a tradition of Swami Dayananda and Arsha Vidya tradition. Her Guruji was very much in uh, uh, took Jyotish and spirituality. Uh, very seriously and she has huge knowledge of Jyotish. So uh, we are welcoming her first time for our conference and she's going to come and uh, give us uh, her blessing and knowledge. And again, uh, it is a very powerful speaker. And um, and then my, I am the um, other, uh, I'm going to do two master classes this time. And I am, um, going to talk about the fault of Mars in relationships and marriage. You see, Mars is a very important planet when you study marriage, actually in your own life as well. But I'm focusing on uh, how Mars uh, can create this kuja dosha that can totally spoil a marriage relationship and uh, create disputes, anger, frustration, violence, even uh, you know, breakup of marriage, but also if we learn how to manage it. If you know me, you know that I'm not always just talking about the problems. Uh, I'm trying to give you some ideas and clues of how to deal with this situation. So firstly, to recognize what is the uh, fault of Mars and then how to deal with it. So this is going to be my first uh, masterclass. And the second one is, ooh, it's got hidden, one sec. So the second one is on Marana Karaka Sthana for planets. Now, uh, you see, there are certain positions for planets where they are ineffectual. So for example, if you have Saturn in the first house, Jupiter in the third house, um, uh, Venus in the sixth house, I'm just trying, Moon in the eighth, um, Rahu in the ninth, um, I think Mercury in the fourth, uh, seventh, and who did I miss out? Mars in the seventh, Mars in the seventh. So, but actually when you see in practice, those planets seem to be working quite well as well. So there's some aspects of them, they are totally dysfunctional. Uh, and others aspects that they are work quite well. So uh, what to see, how to recognize them, how to work with that Marana Sthana of the planets. And so that is um, my other masterclass. Um, then um, one of the things I ha have instituted in the um, uh, with the Fresh Talents Conference is that the first speaker after the keynote address is the Saraswati lecture speaker. And Petra Pobuda from Germany is going to be talking about the aim of moksha in the chart. Petra is a long-term student of mine. Uh, when I wrote my first book, Essentials of Vedic Astrology, uh, it got translated into Germany, uh, into German, sorry. And then I went to the German conference and Petra has been studying with me, right, I think since uh, 2000. Uh, and um, 
so we have a very great relationship and she's very serious student of Jyotish and uh, she's also in her own right an advisor, counselor, teacher. Uh, so she is uh, going to uh, talk about, um, uh, she's going to do the Saraswati lecture and Goddess Saraswati is a goddess of knowledge. So uh, she is, uh, you know, uh, we, I decided to have this as a special lecture and to, um, you know, uh, introduce the, uh, the best of the speakers who have contributed to uh, studying of Vedic astrology. Uh, so Petra Buddha is going to be doing the Saraswati lecture. Uh, then Julie Sweetlick, um, she's a master palmist, uh, combining palmistry and Jyotish. So what she's been doing is that uh, this year for the conference, she's going to explore the planetary ruler of the finger. So you know that, that each of the finger has a planetary ruler. But uh, so the shape of the finger, how it is, what it is, uh, how do you uh, combine that with Jyotish? And she's been, um, I've been seeing her research this for almost the last one year on this topic with all the other people. So she's taken the photographs and she's going to present. She's going to be our first, um, you know, one of the first speakers uh, because it is exploring uh, the connection between the hands and the planets. Actually, this was a tradition in India that people looked at the palmistry alongside with Jyotish because uh, people could give you the wrong chart. They could try to test you. They could try to uh, make you slip up. And uh, whereas if you knew palmistry, uh, you could uh, see that how the palmistry and astrology works. So this is uh, Julie Sweetlick is going to be doing this. And then Tulika uh, wrote, so she's a first time speaker uh, and uh, has been studying for a long time with me. and. Um, so she's talking about financial geniuses, what makes them tick. So she's going to look at the chart of people who have uh, great financial uh, success and then look at their charts and come to some conclusion. Um, uh, Virginia uh, is going to talk about Virginia Thomas, Venus happiness versus desire. So Virginia also is a long-term student of mine and she's based in uh, USA and uh, she's, um, uh, you know, studied both Western Vedic astrology. So Venus, you know, is a key planet in the chart. When we study Venus, we want to know uh, the quality of Venus in the chart because uh, he is the Sukha Karaka, the significator of happiness. But the Sukha uh, also, he's uh, the Rajas planet. So Rajas is desire. So how do you balance those two things? So I'm also looking forward to this uh, lecture. And then Kamal Thapar from UK. Uh, he's going to talk about planets and their predisposition to certain diseases. I think Kamal has been studying Jyotish under many masters since... I don't know, ever, forever. And he's a great, full of knowledge. And he's going to talk about uh, the health factor and how to judge that in the chart. And uh, Kamal Thapar is coming from UK to uh, give his presentation. Uh, Darinka Marun is my young student. And she's... Um, been, she's already finished her three-year study and she is also um, uh, already on to advanced courses. A very serious student. This is her picture at the Saturn Temple uh, last year. We went to uh, this um, major Saturn Temple in Kokilavan near Mathura and you could buy this uh, sun with Saturn's face on it. So she had bought that. So it's a really nice picture of us. So she's coming from Australia, Jyotish and five elements, the movement of consciousness into matter. Uh, so, um, and then Anahita Rao, these are again, first time speaker, past, present and future, Nadi predictions with Rao's nakshatras. 
So Anahita has also been uh, studying for many years. You see, people who are studying Jyotish, it's a passion. Uh, you are passionate about the subject and you keep on studying. So she's uh, and uh, so these Nadi predictions with Rahu Nakshatras is some rare knowledge that she has gained. And so uh, again, she's first time speaker, but I'm sure that's going to be very interesting. Then Lena Elizabeth Preston uh, is uh, USA. Lena has been uh, studying and long term uh, Jyotish. She has her own practice. She's living in near Nevada City, I think. Yeah. And uh, she's been I've known her for years. She's been studying with me for a long time. And uh, so she also presented in um, India, so this is her second time presenting, but she's doing other places as well. Uh, she's been lecturing. So her uh, topic is sun, worldly power and inner authority. You see, sun represents the king, but he's also connected to the Gayatri Mantra, to this very highly spiritual energy. So when you're looking at the sun, we, there are two fa phases and people may have this powerful sun and uh, you know, be authoritarian and you see that powerful sun in the chart of some powerful, uh, not democratic, but uh, more despotic leaders, but also powerful sun can make you a great yogi, a great spiritual teacher. So um, this is a topic that Lena is going to talk about. Uh, Kathy has uh, been my friend for ages and ages and she studies with me as well and has completed her three year course plus the advanced courses as well. So Kathy also presented in 2016 and uh, uh, she's going to be she's doing some research on nakshatras up close and personal how to honor inspire support the symbolic energy. The, so she lives in. Uh, she's from Bay Area as well. She's a Bay Area speaker. We have two Bay Area speakers other than me. Uh, so um, so the, she's going to talk about this. I, I don't know what the presentation is going to be as yet, but uh, of course the nakshatras are the key factor in any chart and they represent the root of the um, soul. So uh, how sh uh, to look at that will be very interesting. Uh, then Lalita uh, Krishnan, we have number of uh, people presenting on nakshatras. Lalita has presented on all the, about, except 2013, she has given presentation on all our um, conferences and she's a fund of knowledge on India, on Tamil Nadu, and she's extremely helpful whenever we go to the trips and uh, you know, when we want some extra knowledge, then she's the person to ask. So she's talking about Manasa Nakshatra, the pulse of the mind. So Manasa Nakshatra is the 25th Nakshatra from your moon. And this is one of the most important Nakshatras in the chart that reflects how your mind is working. And studying that, transits to that, all those are um, key in chart interpretation. Then Tatiana is our other, actually even Lalita, she doesn't live in Bay Area, she lives in Sacramento. So we have number of people, Lina, Lalita, and then um, living close by. And then uh, Tatiana actually lives very close to the conference venue. So she's um, our San Francisco uh, presenter. And uh, she has been seriously studying Jyotish spirituality for uh, many years and she's at present in Ketu Dasha. So she's going to talk about her personal experience, what it is to be in Ketu Dasha, what has she experienced, how she will advise people to deal with it because she's going, she's towards the end of her Ketu Dasha just now. So, uh, so that is it for the speakers and what we are doing. And uh, so the hotel is uh, uh, Pier 2620 uh, in Fisherman's Wharf. Uh, so that's 2620 Jones Street. If you go on the website, all the details are there. It's a, a very nice small boutique hotel. 
uh, extremely well located. Actually, if you can see just behind here, this is the sea. So we are not on the sea, but very close to it, like two minutes walk from there. So uh, it's uh, on, uh, this is Jones's Street. It's just behind Fisherman's Wharf. Uh, and I was lucky to find this because my niece works there. And when she got the job there, then I thought, wow, this is something that I could do a conference here. And so the, hence the conference has happened. And so when you come to San Francisco, it's a different energy there. I, I love San Francisco. Actually, the first time I came to USA, I flew in from Vancouver and the first city I visited was San Francisco. Actually, I la um, came to New York, but I, just airport, but the first city and I fell in love with it. It was so out of, so unusual and uh, so, and so my brother moved here many years ago. And so now I live in this and I, uh, I find it a great pleasure. Just, I love driving into the city and just enjoying. So there's a Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, when you walk a few minutes from where we are, you can see the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, our hotel. So you'll get plenty opportunity. So this is a spectacular San Francisco. And it's, it's really a very characterful city. It's really extremely nice. And one of the things is that our hotel is, I would say, a, a block from uh, Fisherman's Wharf, but we don't get any of the noise or tourism. It's very quiet area, but it's um, you can walk out to lunch. You can have lunch at Fisherman's Wharf and you can take a ride in the iconic trams if you want there's all sorts of activity going on but you're not in right in it so that it's not bothering you and then same with pier 39 that is close by you may want to come a day or early or day later and uh, and then the beautiful sea lions endless sea lions they're very cute they're also there uh, so you can go and see them photograph them and of course, this is the up and down. I couldn't get over, you know, coming from uh, India first time when I came. Uh, I was used to just flat roads and uh, up and down only in the mountains. But here you see, and these crazy roads, you just go and then it just goes straight up. And that is something really very interesting to see. And we are going to be living there. You can walk to these places. And you can walk to the uh, Lombard Street, which is the Crooked Street. And you can walk down, walk up, take a car, uh, various things. You can take a trip there. So the setting is beautiful. There's a lot of fabulous knowledge. And uh, so it is, uh, so the uh, best thing is the early bird uh, price uh, is, uh, 21st of June. So uh, that is going to be, um, and then after that, we have different rates. So it's best for you to book early for it uh, because then that is good. I also know, um, you know, I've uh, tried to keep it at minimum because the conferences are very uh, expensive to organize. Uh, and so the, this conference is not about, it's about promoting Jyotish and having people come there. So, um, so hopefully that you will come. And uh, so this is uh, the hotel uh, addresses, uh, Pier 2620 Hotel Fisherman's Wharf. Oh, I forgot to put the, but th there's a special group rate, 1811 uh, Komel, that's the group uh, code, so you can put that, or if you go on my website, you can book directly from there. So the thing is this, that we, uh, San Francisco is so busy that uh, we, we had to kind of wait to get the hotel because they have these big conventions that the whole city gets booked up. Uh, and the um, rooms are beautiful. They are all brand new furbished. And actually the hotel has been bought over by Marriott. Uh, but they, Marriott will take over on 1st of January 2019. So uh, it's uh, very interesting. Uh, 
good comfortable place or you could take a bn uh, air airbnb you know some people are booking an airbnb as well so um, san francisco is one of the few cities where public transport is good you know you can public transport uber lyft all sorts of things so walking um, so it's a great uh, city i think city by the bay uh, so you can register early. Um, so early bird rate to 621, 2018. So it's uh, next Thursday. And uh, the cost is $600 for the early bird. And the hotels and all, you can stay there. I mean, you don't have to stay in the hotel I have uh, arranged. There are m multiple hotels, endless choice. Uh, so that that is not, and you can fly into San Francisco uh, SF, you can fly into Oakland. Um, both SF and Oakland, there's a BART that brings you into the city. So very well connected by public transport as well. So, uh, and then the reason I'm doing this conference in USA is that I have the Nakshatra Temple trip in 2019. And this is a long trip, it's 23 days long. Uh, it's taken years and years to organize it. And I have to uh, especially thank Lalita for it, Lalita Krishnan, because it was her, uh, she who suggested this trip. And uh, uh, we've, uh, I've been many times so that I could see. So the uh, Nakshatra Temple trip, I'm going to do a webinar for it on 8th of July. So I should write that. Uh, so I'll 8th July. Uh, is the webinar and um, yeah, so there's going to be a webinar on 8th July for it. So this is um, uh, my photo outside Pushya Temple. Uh, and this is a, a, a spectacular uh, temple uh, for um, Minakshi Temple in Madurai. And this is for Mula Nakshatra. So you can see, you actually cannot imagine how spectacular it is. We've been many times there, but this is the for Mula Nakshatra. So I've got a few pictures of the Nakshatras. So this is Shravana Nakshatra, temple for Shravana. And this is for Rohini. The thing is that some of these temples are so obscure that our going to it will actually re-energize them. And so I'll talk about this on a separate program. Uh, so regarding the conference, all information is on my website, uh, komela.com. You can also look at the Facebook page, uh, Fresh Talents of Vedic Astrology. I have a page there. You can like that. That would be very nice. And also on Twitter, at Komela Sutton, I give update on this conference. And I'm also on Instagram under my own name. So the conference will be there. And then uh, you can sign up for the newsletter. And that is it. So these beautiful posters have been made by Tatiana, who's a graphic designer. So these... Uh, uh, another talent, multicolored. So um, any questions you have, I'm happy to um, uh, answer if you have any questions. Okay. So I shall say, uh, just see. If this... So I shall then, uh, so you'll get a recording of this tomorrow. Sometime they will email you the automatic and they will give you uh, the recording of it. Hmm. Yeah, those of who you want to apply for scholarship, you have to email me and we I'm going to see because you're going to fundraise for it. So uh, 
if we get the funding, then uh, definitely. Um, so if you want, uh, you can uh, email me regarding it. Yeah. Yeah, um, regarding the presentation, um, uh, I will have a, um, my laptop as well. We'll have the presentation. So you just bring your laptop with your presentation or you uh, bring um, laptop is the best, but you can also bring your um, the, whatever the flash drive if you want. But as a speaker, I'll be informing you about the logistics. So don't worry about that. So, OK, I shall uh, see you, hopefully. Lots of you at the conference as well. Thank you. Chanchal, if you go on my website, you'll find my email there. You can send me a contact thing. Thank you.